you know, when you're managing the rotation like you did against OSU uh, and then still trying to balance and get a better finish, are there things you look back at for as well as you may have managed the rotation, particularly in the first half, that you'd either want to adjust, change, in, you know, incorporate maybe Coop or Gabe for a rotation for a couple minutes in the second to get a better finish? Or It's, you know? it's going to be game to game. Um, you know, score and time will, will matter. Um, you know, I like what we did with Dante. Um, Jackson and, and watching the film, Jermaine really got tired. I mean, he had some really bad possessions there and, and fouling with a minute 34 to go, he lost his mind. But, uh, um, you know, I I think we, you know, have to keep watching it, uh, especially on a Thursday, Saturday now. You know, uh, it'll be different. Uh, next week we got a Wednesday, Saturday. So, it's going to vary game to game, week to week. But uh, Coop had a great practice. Gabe had a great practice. Those guys are always ready. They'll know everything that you know about Stanford. They'll be ready to go. Um, but I, I do have to make sure we get those guys some breaks around TV timeouts. And uh, you know, Dante's only played what uh, missed fourteen games. We've played twenty five. He's only played eleven games. So. He's just kind of working himself into shape. He's only been back a month. Um, so, you know, I got to keep all those things into consideration. So that's a long answer to an easy question, but I'm not sure, you know, that it will be any set pattern, but I do have to do a better job. What are your thoughts on Stanford? They can really score. Uh, you know, they got a number of guys over 40% from three and everybody that plays uh, can shoot the three and above 35 uh, percent except for Keith who is just hard nose he's always giving us problems so um, they got a lot of guys who can shoot and uh, offensively they score 85 points a game at home you know they they're a team that at home really really scores a lot of points so um, we're gonna have to do a great job defensively um, and you know, they didn't shoot the ball well last weekend at Washington, Washington State from three. And uh, I guess I hope that continues. It seems like both Stanford and Cal are teams that are under 500 in the Pac-12, but maybe that's not indicative of, you know, how they play night in and night out. It's not. I mean, I, um, they're both really talented teams. You know, I, I think they got, both have pros, I, you know, uh, Tyson's a pro, you know, they, they've got, Cal's got guys and Stanford's got guys that are going to play basketball a long time. So, and they're both old, you know, they're, uh, Cal's really old and Stanford's really old. And, you know, it seems like Spencer Jones has been there forever. I think this is his fifth year and uh, Michael Jones is a, is a fifth year guy, grad student, uh, Renold's third year guy, Angel's been there four years. You know, they're, they're old. And uh, so um, we're going to have to we're gonna have to play really well. Both both teams are very, very capable uh, any night out. You know, Stanford beat Arizona. Um, so and Arizona's, you know, the best team in our league. I mean, they've proven that through the season. I, you know, I, I know they're ranked really high. And, you know, for any team that beats them, it shows what they're capable of doing. How do you feel like you match up with their size? Well, we match up okay inside with their size, but, you know, at the wing spots, they're bigger than us. Um, you know, uh, we didn't do a real good job with their forwards in the last couple games. We're going to have to – Bam, KJ, going to have to D it up a little bit. Uh, Angels, their second leading scorer. Renault at the post is their leading scorer, and their wings can all shoot, so – you know, we're all going to have to guard because any one of them on a given night, um, you know, can can explode, get a lot of points. There's been a strength of your defense. It has been perimeter defense, one of the better three-point defenses in the league so far. What's going to be the key to against a team who does shoot it as well, who does have that size to making that work against a, a tougher opponent in that way? Well, you got to take away transition and then you got to take away the easy ones. Um, and then 
keep your fingers crossed. You know, because <laughs> I mean, you, you take I'm watching the game film from the other night, and Oregon State had some pretty good looks. They just didn't hit that they've hit in other games, and we had. You know, of our 19 threes, I think 16 of them were really good. <laughs> and we hit two of them, you know. So uh, on any given night, you know, and I was, I was watching, and the reason I say that, I was watching uh, the Stanford-Washington game this morning at Washington, and, and they got beat 20 there. But at one point, they were three for 15 from three, and I had charted it out. And I mean, 12 of them were really good shots you know 45 percent three-point shooters you know and uh angel had hit a couple from the corner but other than that you know jones had missed wide open ones the other jones had missed wide open ones carlisle missed one Renault missed. i mean they all had really good looks so again and i keep telling our players that you know there's just some nights it just for whatever reason doesn't go in and, and you can't quit playing you know you gotta you gotta find another way to win those games um, but you know, some nights you just like crush fingers and, and, uh, but we're going to have to take away their easy ones. I know that. And if, if we don't at home, uh, we can't count on them missing those shots. We got to take away their easy ones. We got to take away their shots in transition. They're going to hit some, uh, we just can't give them a lot of good looks. You were talking about that Oregon State game after how like a little bit of these, some players have more minutes on their shoulders than you wanted especially Jackson, how has this freshman class been in your eyes and what do they still have to learn? Well, Mookie has had the year off. Uh, so that's one freshman. That was that was easy to answer. Uh, uh, KJ, you know, been a little up and down. And and part of it, you know, and I, is the COVID stuff. They're playing against such old guys. Um, you know, Washington, uh, KJ's matched up against Jones. Well, he's in his fifth year. You know, I mean, that's it's a tough assignment uh, for him to guard Brooks. You know, that, Brooks is in his fifth year. I mean, that fourth year. I mean, these guys are old, and you know, so it's really hard for freshmen in this COVID area era, uh, you know, to be consistent. Jackson's had to play against point guards that are bigger and stronger than him. And he struggled a little bit with it, which I anticipated. You know, the scout report, after he gets a few big games, he's going to be, hey, we're going to have to get after this guy. We're not going to be able to give him open shots. And um, so, again, those two guys have done a great job for us. You know, it's it's tough to be a freshman. And we got one more year of COVID. Uh, and that's why a lot of teams have not even gone to freshmen. They've just gone all portal and older guys. and But – you know, we had recruited Jackson since he was in eighth grade and Mookie since he was in eighth grade, you know. And those are guys, in-state guys, we're going to take if we can get them. And K.J. was someone I, I was intrigued with because of his skill level. Um, so, you know, uh, if I made a misjudgment, you know, it's that we have to depend on him too much. Uh, but I wasn't going to be in that position because I wasn't planning on having – Nate not available, uh, Key not available, uh, Dante not available. I was planning on bringing those guys along slowly because I knew uh, in this COVID era that you know we we have to bring freshmen along a little differently than we did before, and so they got thrown into roles that were a little different than we planned, and you know, I think they've handled them okay. And it's it's like I said, it's. You look at our league and, you know, it's just like KJ is going to have Angel who's, you know, four years older than him. You know, he's just going to have to work his tail off. And then the guys they bring in, Keith's been there forever. Uh, Renault, like I said, is a third-year guy. You know, but we got Dante, you know, and that's why Dante had played pretty good. He has been with us. You know, he hadn't played a lot of games for us, but he's been with us a long time. And so uh, it's just a different time. And, it, and it's, it's it's hard on freshmen. And we're going to have another year of it. And we've got two freshmen coming in, and, you know, I've talked to them about it. You know, it's 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 a different time. A couple more? Yeah, you have a diagnosis for Nate after the testing from last week. You know, there's, there's still, you know, he feels better, which is, is good. 
Uh, they're still running some tests, still doing some tests, but you know, he just doesn't feel good. He's lost weight. Uh, he's lost strength. Um, so, you know, he's still out, you know, he, he hasn't practiced. He was at practice today, but he hasn't practiced. So, um, but no definitive word, no. Is there anything you want to on, on Jesse, is he back home? Is he still in Eugene? And is there any hope that he might get that extra year after the injury? Uh, you know, I, I said it right away. Uh, you know, Jesse was brought in late for us for one year. Um, I'm sure he'll get the year back, but uh, he won't be back here. No, we, we, we brought him in late. We wanted an experienced guard, but, uh, you know, we signed uh, VJ early to kind of replace him so we don't we don't have a scholarship and and so um you know he'll he'll get another year but but he won't be back at Oregon